Welcome to Hot Weekly. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. <laughs> and this is Haunt Weekly. I'm choking on air. This is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast on a attraction on the entertainment community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we return to you once again. Happy Sunday if you're catching us on the live stream. Happy Monday if you catch this as is going out, the recorded version is going out. Or happy whenever. Yeah. We don't set your schedule, man. You can do what you want. We're not the boss of you. We're, we're not your boss. <laughs> You listen to us when it works for you. Uh-huh. But yes, thank you for joining us. Thank you for letting us into your ear holes for an hour. We greatly appreciate the ability to spend this time with you and to talk haunted attraction stuff. And this episode is number 264, which means it's time to do the, the news. news. So yes, we are doing the news this week. And as we do once every four weeks, if you want to catch up on previous news episodes, please feel free to do so at hauntweekly.com. We're Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, youtube.com slash hauntweekly. has all the previous episodes in one place with convenient playlists for interviews, news episodes, whatever you want. We got it there. Also, check us out at iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts. So yes, have a great time finding us wherever is most convenient. All right, well, first thing is first, we have the question of the week. Okay, the question of the week this week. Well, we'll let's do last week's first. Well, yeah, that's what we normally do, but you threw me off with your your. My, my, my hand off? Last week's. Question of the week? Question of the week. Winner is Daryl Plunkey with Black Christmas. We asked, um, what is your favorite horror movie set during the holiday season, basically, right. and... Black Christmas is a special classic, one that's very dear to my heart, too. Yeah, it's, and we had asked, and, and he agrees that the original is the best one. He did not see the remake. I We did. We saw it in theaters. We saw it the day yeah. it was released. We actually saw it on Christmas Day that year. Yeah. Which I regret. Yeah. Because I thought, hey, there was another, because I hadn't seen the original at that point. Right. And yeah. I wasn't even fully aware it was a remake. Yeah, it caused us to go and look up the original to see why they thought it should be remade. And it was the original was much better. They had no yeah. business remaking it, those assholes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some of the uh, tropes in modern day horror can be first seen in Black Christmas. Yeah, including the calls coming from within the house being yeah. the most iconic of exactly. them. Exactly. And it's really kind of funny because the call coming from within the house is now just super easy because we all have cell phones. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Ring, ring, motherfucker, the call's coming from the side of the house. <laughs> so yes, Daryl Plunkey, we will be in touch with you shortly. Um, Daryl, of course, big friend of the podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this week's question. Yeah, this week's question. Now I get so, to do that? Yeah, you can do that now. All right. What's on your holiday gift list for this year? Yes. A few days to go until Christmas when we're recording this. What are you hoping Santa or whatever relevant mythical creature brings you? <laughs> yeah, or, you know, I, if I have a last-minute gift that I want to get for you, what am I getting? Yeah, what am I running out and buying right now? Yeah. Um, and it's kind of weird because we already got one of the items on our gift list. Yeah, exactly. Through sheer, I don't want to call it dumb luck, but... I think it's the product of marketing, but Ellie was absolutely amazing to us and got us one of the Caterpillar workstands. Yeah. And we've been eyeing one because we're like, this is great for building panels. We might need this. Right. But we put off buying it because we're not building panels right this second. But yet it still seemed really, really goddamn cool. And as you said, you know, before we went to record this. Is, I'm cheap. We're, we're cheap. <laughs> so... so I didn't buy yeah, but she a... bought one. We haven't had a chance to play with it yet. Yeah. Uh, but she bought one for us. She did not get the idea from us, which is the part that's a little creepy. Yeah, it is. She got the idea from Facebook. Just because she knows us. <coughs> I, 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 there's a li- there, this is a little sus in my book. <laughs> it's a lot sus. It's like we were Googling it, and they shove ads for it in her Facebook. Well, yeah, but that happens anytime any of us Google anything. Yeah, that's true. Because all of our accounts are now linked. Linked in various intricate ways. But okay, so what else are you? What would be on your gift list? Um. Now you've put me on the spot. Well, you know, 
I'll, I'll do mine. <laughs> so I was like, I thought that was our answer. <laughs> I'll buy you some time. Well, no, because I, for me, I've said it before on this in the question a week, and I'll say it again. Mm-hmm. I really do want a CFX mask for Bernie Baxter. Yeah. I'm happy with the quality of the mask that I have. It's good. It's comfortable. Other than the, there's a bucket of sweat when I take it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds and feels loverly when it comes yeah. off. Um, but I would love a CFX mask. And in an interesting twist... <laughs> We have purchased a quote unquote, and I do use the quotes oh, here yeah, heavily. Definitely. CFX mask from Wish yeah. for $15. No, it was $20. We paid yeah. 20 bucks for it. Uh, we are going to unbox it live on Tuesday, I think is what we're planning on doing. Yeah, Tuesday afternoon. Sometime we're going to go live. We're going to open this baby up and see and how And check it for safety. It and then I'm going to put it on and see how crap it is. Because I'm very sure it is utter crap. Having seen and used actual CFX masks in the past. Right. I, or masks that great a quality, I should say. I don't think I've used the exact yeah. brand. Um, but I've used similar ones in that, that price range, and that quality range. Um, I, I know what to expect out of a mask in that tier. Mm-hmm. And we've I opened the... It came from Wish, like I said. So it came from Random China Company. Yeah. Uh, 35. And I've opened enough to see that it is the mask, but not to take it out of the bag or anything. Yeah. Because we ordered, we, we drunk wish orders sometimes. Uh huh. Yeah, that, that happens. Because we're cheap. Yeah. Well, and we ordered two things this time. It was that and then, then something that was so light and you didn't know what it was. And I couldn't remember what we had done. It was a skull for me. Yeah. You ordered a skull <laughs> for your headdress. Yeah. Um, which was cool. But yeah, it sent like 8,000 air packages with it. I had to undo I like all the layers of air packing to get into I it. I know. It was really funny. It was funny. But so yeah, but yeah, so we made sure it is the mask, but we have not taken it out of the packaging yet. We have not put it on or tried anything with it. We're going to do yeah. that Tuesday afternoon. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll shoot for some mid afternoon central time to do it. Yeah. I'm not, we'll probably come, we'll probably post more about the exact time we're going to do it. Cause we're on vacation until the new year. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we'll be here with you guys on Sundays. Yeah, we'll be doing this, but, but I mean, realistically we're on vacation. What is time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't have anything really big that I want for the haunt. Um, but I could use a buttload and that's a technical term. Of PVC, <laughs> because I want to build a new structure for our pumpkin walkway, because um, we have a pumpkin tunnel, mm-hmm. but some the pieces that we've used in the past are now, they were metal and they're corroding. Yeah, they're thin so, metal. Yeah. So basically, I want to get a bunch of PVC and a bunch of connectors and just build my own freaking thing for next year. And yeah, it'll be a flat top instead of an arch, probably, but I think it'll still look really cool. And we can make it tall enough so that a dad carrying the kid on the doesn't shoulder bonk the kid. doesn't bonk the kid on the pumpkin. <laughs> well, what hunter doesn't want a truckload of PVC, foam, or yeah. or plywood? I mean, that's like the three things every haunter wants. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but other than that, you know... <sighs> The only other thing I can think of is a um, compressor for an airbrush because I have started playing with my airbrush on miniature painting um, and I'm really enjoying it. And I think that a better compressor would actually mean that I could play with makeup on people for the haunt because it'd be much faster than trying to do all the appliques that we normally do on our actors. I, I do not disagree with that. That sounds interesting. So, yeah, those are ours. What are yours? What do you want for the holiday season? What is your gift request from family, friends, or mythical beings. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, let us know. You can leave your comment in the chat if you're joining us live. You can leave it at Haunt Weekly on Facebook, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, hauntweekly.com. We've got a neat little contact form. Or on this, as a comment on the YouTube channel, we do read those. Yes. <clears throat> we read every comment pretty much without fail. Um, I guess let us know what you want from the holidays. What do you hope is under the Christmas tree, so to yeah. speak? Yeah, I don't like the little... Um, Red circle on my Facebook. So if you leave a comment, I'm getting a little red circle and I'm clearing it off. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of gifts and other other things, uh, we have been working on the Haunt Weekly store. We have two new products up. Yeah. I mentioned before, you could be a if you're a plain old aficionado and listening to this show, that's great. Happy for you. But if you want to make your Haunt Aficionado status official, 
Uh-huh. We have official Haunt Aficionado t-shirts <laughs> after I misspelled Aficionado the first time. But it would have been funny to <laughs> leave it It would have been better. Way. I know it's a better t-shirt, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> it's a... More. You didn't want to be mistaken for misspelling. For I, I wanted yeah. to do it, but anyways, we have official Haunt Aficionados t-shirt. So if you're the type of haunter that goes through haunted attractions whilst extending your pinky, we have t-shirts for you. Best of all, it's at hauntweeklystore.com. You can get t-shirts and masks with that design. And if you between now and Wednesday, I believe that is the 23rd, so Christmas yes. Eve Eve. If you use the code DANEWS, that's D-A-N-E-W-S, you receive 20% off everything in the store. Yeah. DANEWS is your coupon code. <laughs> I, I, I like the shirt. We're going to try to add a couple of items each week. Yeah. And in short order, the store is going to be bustling. But <clears throat> Yeah, but we are still looking for suggestions. Yes. So if you, um, we got a suggestion for coffee mugs. Last mm. week, if you um, have other suggestions, yeah, I'm going please to, send them to us. <clears throat> I do think I'm going to set up, since I've already got the design done, I can do the official Haunt Weekly coffee mug pretty quickly. Yeah, I think patches would be good for, patches would be for good just too. Haunt Weekly. Yeah, so I'm going yeah. to do some just Haunt Weekly stuff, um, I think will be the next effort. And then Crystal has designed a literal fucking book's worth of things for the store that I've got to go through and yeah. figure out which we're going to put on products and which I'm going to tell her no. Yeah. <laughs> Just no, honey. That's not yeah. that's not as good as you think it is. Yeah. Well, I know that there's a couple that aren't. Yeah. But fair enough. So, yeah, I, I am excited, though, about the store and about getting more things up. So, once again, hauntweeklystore.com and code DANEWS, D-A-N-E-W-S, for 20% off everything in the store between now and the 23rd. Mm-hmm. Um, so, as we mentioned earlier, this is an episode that is divisible by four. That means it is time to do the news. news, as per the coupon code. Yeah. Oh, funny how that works. Hmm. It's like it someone is. planned that. <clears throat> so, we are excited to bring you the news. i got to be honest, it's not the most action-packed news episode. Yeah. This is the first time, I think, all year I have struggled to find news yeah. for this. Yeah. No, I do, I'd agree with that. But you were telling me how there's no news out there, and then you opened it up, and there's the giant first story. Yeah, giant. <coughs> yeah, picture this. Sicily. 19... <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. Wrong. Wrong, wrong movie. Huh? Wrong show. <laughs> yeah. But no, um, we were driving somewhere. I think we were going to Big Lots at the time. We are on our way somewhere. Yeah. We're going to uh, pick up some. We're picking up some. Doesn't and matter. doing curbside. We're doing curbside pickup. But we're on our way, and I was complaining to Crystal... That there's no news. And this was like Friday. Mm -hmm. There's just no news. I don't know how we're going to do a news episode. It's going to be a struggle to pull it together. And then I open my phone because I get an alert for Haunted Attraction News. Because that's the type of nerd I am. I get alerts for those. And I'm like, oh, what bull crap is this going to be? Another winter haunt? Because we're not covering every haunt that's doing a winter thing. No. A holiday thing. No. I said, no. Uh, the lead story, and I think what's going to be the, a lot of our time this week is Erebus Haunted House and the escape rooms are up for sale. Yeah, that's crazy. <clears throat> Erebus has been on our we want to visit this at some point list for a long time. Um, so we were completely flabbergasted by the news. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I, I it, it, it's, it's, it's bizarre, and it comes kind of out of nowhere from our perspective. Mm-hmm. Because um, Erebus has been not just one of the biggest, but one of the most successful haunts right. for a very, very long time. And as you noted, it's a haunt that's been on our bucket list. It's up there with like Haunted Overload, um, Netherworld, which we went and saw a couple of years ago. These these big, huge mega haunts that we have to see. Um, yeah. The Scream Factory in uh, Salt Lake City is on that list. The mm -hmm. Queen Mary in Los Angeles. Not yeah. Scary Farm and <laughs> near nearby, you know. Mm -hmm. We have all these places we have to go see. And Erebus has always been on that list, but it may not be there in 2021 from the looks of things. it's The story is by uh, Kirk Pinho? Pino? Sorry, Kirk. <laughs> from Cranes, no. Detroit. They had the best coverage of it. Uh, basically, Ed and Jim Terab... Terabus, the owners of it, have put both the haunted house and the escape rooms up for sale. They are asking $10 million 
for the 104,000 square foot haunted house, and that's one of the, always been one of their selling points is the largest haunted house. Yeah, actually, they um, <clears throat> they entered the Guinness World Book of Records in 2005 for the longest walkthrough indoor of a haunted, haunted attraction. attraction. Yeah. Indoor haunted attraction. Yep. Yeah, you really can't compare size of indoor versus outdoor, right? Because you can, of course, have an absolutely yeah. giant outdoor. Well, and, and that's amazing because they only opened in two thousand in two thousand. Yeah. So by two thousand five, five years later, they're already making records. Yeah. Um, they're wanting ten million for the main haunt, which, like I said, is one hundred four thousand square feet, and four point five million for the thirty seven thousand square foot escape room space. Um, they are seeking buyers that will either. Uh, continue the existing usage, meaning keeping the haunt there, right? Or convert them into medical marijuana provisioning centers. Yeah. Which apparently this was something I was unaware of, but in the, in that area, in Michigan area, there is all Michigan. Michigan, this medical marijuana thing is huge, mm-hmm. and a lot of businesses are looking at getting involved in it. Um, I have I I don't know anything about the business of marijuana, right? <clears throat> Other than it, it, then it actually helps states because it brings in a lot of revenue from the yeah. taxes on it. Yeah, and it's, so. it's, it's. I know that driving through Oklahoma was it was bananas. Yeah, because yeah. like we drove uh, straight up. What interstate is that? Straight up through from Texas into Oklahoma and into Kansas, mm-hmm. and every cocking billboard was advertising "Get your marijuana card here." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So apparently. It's big business there as well. So, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, I can see that. Uh, They did note that they will open next year if it doesn't sell. This isn't a matter of we're bankrupt or we're shutting down or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is they're looking to sell the property. that They did not say if they plan on moving to a new location should they complete the sale. Right. Which is unsettling. And especially with them looking for people that may be continuing the existing usage. It sounds like they're not. Right, yeah, I know, and it's just, it's a little odd, um, like you said, it, it feels like it's out of left field, but, I mean, I'm surprised that there weren't more of these stories, honestly, of haunts looking to sell, because... I think we're a little early for more of these stories, I think we'll be seeing yeah. the stories come In February, August. I think even, like, February, March of next year. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of haunts out there that are really kind of... Biding yeah. their time until they see what the 2021 season is going to look like. Right. And there's a lot of optimism placed on the vaccine. Yeah. Which may be premature because widespread distribution of it probably won't be happening until September. Right. Yeah. And sorry if you can hear the dog in the background. There's a there's a stray that lives in our neighborhood that's, you know, a little asshole. barking <laughs> her head off right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, so they're not... Going to, or they haven't listed the Mythos Museum, which is next door for sale. Yeah, and they right just now. opened that like last year or yeah. this year. They opened it. I can't remember if last exactly. year or this year. But we did, we covered that in the news episode. We did. They opened a, a brand new, like, Curiosities and Oddities Museum. Yeah. Pretty much adjacent to it. That is not for sale. So they're keeping that business no mm-hmm. matter what it seems like. But yeah, it's, it's widely regarded as the biggest indoor haunted attraction in the world. Mm-hmm. And also considered to be one of the best and one of the must see attractions. It's like I said, it's up there with like Netherworld, Haunted Overload, yeah. Queen Mary, all those haunts. I really hope that if they do sell, that the new owners keep it as a haunted attraction. You know, I I hope but, that's the way that it goes. But does that make sense? I mean, is is the question? And I'll I'll get into it in just a minute <clears throat> because. Uh, buildings in that area previously sold at the height of the recession in 2008 or so. Previously sold for 10 to $20 per square feet. Now they regularly sell for 60 to 70 Right. And they are asking for 96 per square feet for the haunt and 121 per square foot for the escape room. So they're asking a high amount there, but not crazy pants high. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. But I th- and this is, I've been thinking about this story ever since I read it. And... I've said it a hundred times before on this podcast that haunted attractions as a business model don't make sense. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Racking up 365 days worth of bill that you have up to like 45 nights to pay off. Right. It's a crazy business model. Yeah. Unless you like luck out and are able to buy property cheap um, that's already ready to move in basically. Yeah. 
and that's one of the the, the things is like <clears throat> for much of our lifetime, mm-hmm. the cheap, ready to move in space has always been warehouses. Yeah, uh, Thirteenth Gate, both in its current iteration and what was Louisiana Nightmares, opened up in warehouses and downtown areas because we grew up. And most of our adulthood, we're used to downtown blight, right? <clears throat> and a move away from warehousing and that style of manufacturing. Yeah. So a lot of those warehouse spaces, House of Shock, yeah, slash New Orleans Nightmare, same deal. They mm-hmm. rented, um, they leased their space, but they for for a, a comparative song, yeah, because it was in a disused part of town. Right, and their landlord liked them, according to them. So, you know, it's... Power to you. you, know, if you yeah. Know, but that's the thing. Right now, even ignoring the likely recession we're heading into, even ignoring mm-hmm. that completely, yeah. and we should for right now, the economy is changing. Retail is becoming the warehousing. We're yeah. seeing retail spaces like I can... If I make the drive between here and where our, um, our Manhattan Boulevard, which is where the Best Buy and all that is, just on the the uh, expressway, I probably pass 24 to 36. It's a five-mile stretch. I, I pass 24 to 36 unused, vacant retail spaces, giant ones. Yeah. Just in that stretch. Is that about right? Yeah. <clears throat> and that includes everything from the size of like an old uh, the, one of them is a Bed Bath and Beyond, right? Or 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 and an H H Greg, yeah H H Greg that's abandoned. These are huge stores um, that are just completely abandoned. Right at the end of our block on our, what are the street our house is functionally on, we have a unused Ace Hardware that's uh, yeah, and, which I would love to buy, but they are asking way too much. Yeah, they are. Their pants on head, stupid with that one. Yeah, there's no nobody going to rent it for that price. I'm no. sorry, I don't know what the hell they're thinking. Um, that's pants on head, crazy. Yeah, you know. So we're shifting away from retail, and that's because of the vacant space and the cheap space is retail space, mm-hmm. as opposed to where 20 years ago it was. <clears throat> it was largely warehouse space. Disused warehouse space. And as a result of that, I think we're going to see haunted attractions occupying more and more retail places. Yeah, well, I mean, there was the haunted house that just bought the mall this year. Yeah, exactly. And and that's freaking I, br- brilliant. I'm gonna, I think we're going to see a lot more of those types of purchases. Right. And I, what it sounds like to me is the owners, the Terabus brothers, I think they're brothers, uh, mm-hmm. see an opportunity to... Basically, flip the property. They're they're realizing the property value in that area has risen to a level where they just it doesn't make sense to hold on to it. Yeah, <clears throat> they may take this as an opportunity to exit the industry. They may um, continue elsewhere, but yeah, if the property has grown that much in value to where they're asking for literally ten times the price they paid for it, which it sounds like. Yeah. That is hard to ignore. I have to admit that. It breaks my heart, breaks my little black heart, but <laughs> yeah. I understand it. Yeah. Yeah, and you're correct. They are brothers. Cool. So. I thought so. Yeah. I thought I read they were brothers. It'd be a hell of a coincidence for them to both have the same last name, Terabus. They could be married. That's true. You know, that was the other option in my mind. That's true. But, that's a good point now. But they that's, are that's brothers. Valid. They are brothers. Okay. Um,. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that the news podcast, the news podcasts, don't become this recurring thing over the next six months or so of such and such haunt up for sale, <clears throat> such and such haunt announces their closure. But I have a feeling that's exactly what's going to happen. Well, and if that happens, we may do a. Here's a list of all the places. And and and, hi- and highlight ones like Erebus that are major names. Yeah, exactly. But- um, but, yeah, I, I think the smaller haunts are going to really struggle. Um, especially the smaller haunts that don't own their space outright. Exactly. If you're paying mortgage or lease or a loan, paying off a loan mm-hmm. of any stripe on it, um, yeah, there's this is going to be a challenging time coming up because we know small business relief did not come nearly as swiftly or as capably as it should have. 
we know because you know if you weren't a mega church and you didn't get the four million dollars in PPP loans or whatever, no. you know, Joel Austin got that. You know, you probably didn't get enough to cover your losses and cover your bills. And the result of that is, yeah, a lot of haunts are trying to figure out how to make ends meet. And even if they were able to open, they were only open in limited capacity, probably. Right. If if they were being smart about it. Yeah. Well, we know some haunts were being completely reckless. Yeah. But a lot were trying to be smart. You can never, you know... You can't fix anticipate. stupid people. You know. Yeah, you can't anticipate the customers being stupid on their own. Yeah, there, there was a, a lot of stupid customer stories that came out of the 2020 season. Right. <clears throat> One of which we're going to be touching on in just a second, it looks like. Yeah. Um, so are we moving on? One second. But yeah, I, I, but like I was saying, I was, I'm thinking we may be seeing the end of haunts like Erebus, which are these giant haunts set up in huge warehouses in downtown areas slash warehouse districts. Yeah. Because warehouses are becoming more valuable, but retail space is becoming less valuable. Right. And honestly, that may not be a bad thing in the long run. Because retail space has parking, is designed for customer traffic. Right. And has amenities there that can make going to haunt uh, less scary, I guess is what I'm after. Because <laughs> we've been to some haunts where like, oh, this is where they take you to murder you. <laughs> yeah, I'm 100 percent sure we're gonna die on this yeah. trip. Yeah, or haunts on back roads with no parking, and you've got to like find a field to park in. Yeah, so so it may not be a bad thing, but it, it speaks very ill a of retail. <laughs> that yeah. transition seems to be happening, and b it um, means a lot of haunts are, are going to be doing what Erebus is doing, and that is selling. They're now much more valuable property, and whether they close or move or reopen, time will tell. I mean, I know like we've had we've heard conversations about various other downtown area haunts moving, yeah, to to cheaper areas for them, and so they can sell that property. That because you got to admit, if it's a downtown area that's revitalizing, a haunted attraction that is open, you know, six weekends a year. Yeah. It's not a huge revitalization boost. It's not. You know, you need something more year round there. Um, and that uh, what I think a, a lot of downtowns are kind of looking for now. Because previously it was, yeah, sure, that no one's using like half the buildings in that downtown. Right. To, like you go to downtown Alexandria, which is where uh, Louisiana Nightmares was and where 13th Gate people got their start. And their downtown district is dead. <laughs> Yeah, that's a dying mall. <laughs> Everything around it's just. I mean, to be fair, Alexandria is pretty much dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's it's not just the downtown area, but their downtown area is particularly noteworthily dead. Yeah. And so, yeah, I bet they were very happy to have a haunted attraction agree to bring people down there six weekends, six to eight weekends a year. Yeah. Um, but if it's a revitalizing, like apparently Pontiac is going through this rebirth, it makes a little less sense. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. So we have an update from one of the shootings of October. And I think Hey, whoopee doo. <laughs> yes. Because there were multiple this year. Which one? There were so many. I know. So federal prosecutors have filed charges against the woman um, that shot a guard at Hex House. This was the Hex House shooting. Um, she shot a security guard. In Sepulpa, guard. Oklahoma. Yes. And this one, um, you, you may be going federal prosecutors. Well, yes, because this was on tribal land and the, um, she and the man that she was with was asked to leave. Mm -hmm. They got upset about it because they were intoxicated. So she did the stupid thing of taking out her gun and shooting the guard in the leg. Um, and her Savannah Ban O'Banion. Was her name? Mm -hmm, yeah, um, wonder, she's the woman that's charged. Yes, yes, yes. So she has been charged with it. Yeah, this story when it came out seemed to be one of the more Jesus Christ shooting. I mean, just yeah. Of the sh all the shootings were Jesus Christ people. Just I know. Stop being assholes. I mean, come the fuck on, right? Yeah. This one though really struck me as like one of the. The worst. I mean, they were all bad. I mean, honestly, it's hard to order them. But it was so I, frustrating because as someone that works front of house, yeah, drunk patrons are the worst. Yes. 
Look, I drink. I drink a lot. <laughs> I drink more than I should. I drink more frequently than I should. But I never go to a haunted house drunk. Right. I never do that because that is stupid. Yeah. You drink after. <laughs> Go and go enjoy your beers and your your mixed drinks afterward. No, you know what I mean. Go have fun afterward and, and talk about it and share stories. Oh yeah, they made you scream. Ah, you were so adorable. You know. No, that's the time you do it. Don't do it before because a, you're not going to have your wits around you and you're going to be unsafe. Basically, yeah. I mean, a haunted attraction is a very very safe environment, but there's um, it requires both sides be working on safety. I can build my haunt as safe and as immaculate as possible. But if you're acting like a true dumbass, there's no amount of prep I can do to make keep you safe. No, there isn't. And, uh, and it's no amount of prep you can do to keep other customers safe from the person who's causing the problems. Exactly. There's no amount of security guards. There's no amount of design. There's no amount of anything <laughs> that can prevent... A truly dedicated, stupid person from hurting themselves or someone else inside of a haunted house. Yeah. You can't you, you can't build, design, or enforce your way around that. And actually, I may have misspoke. It may not be on tribal land. No, the, the victim the, was... Uh, uh, the victim was a tribal yeah, member. Yeah. And the FBI was involved as well as the Light Horse Police. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is a whole lengthy history that other podcasts are much better equipped to tackle as the yeah. federal investigators get involved whenever indigenous individuals are involved in a crime. Yeah. But they do. Just it's a lengthy yeah. history and it's a lot of shit well, there that I can't get into. And this is the is this is not her first offense. No, apparently not. <laughs> she's been involved in two other shots fired incidents. Yeah, they they said police say she's been involved in two other shots fired. Man, lady. I I, I think they should take away her guns. I, I I, 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 look, I'm not going to get on the Second Amendment here, but no. yeah. <laughs> uh, she's obviously not responsible enough to have them. Once again, you know, responsible gun gun ownership is a two-way street. Uh-huh. You know? And part of that is the person who owns the gun has to be responsible with them, and this is not responsible use of firearms. No. No matter where you sit on the Second Amendment, I can't, I can't imagine many people going, oh, yeah, she totally deserves her firearms. Yeah. No. No. Shot an innocent security guard trying to keep them safe, and apparently shot had two other incidents where she fired shots. Yeah, that's that's not responsible gun ownership. No, that this is the antithesis of that. Uh, no charges have been filed against the man, so therefore his name has been withheld. Right. Um, yet they're still investigating, but you know, we have charges in the Hex House shooting, and <sighs> that's good. That's good news. That's that's yeah. good news. That's good news. We should just be happy about it and move on. Okay. How's that? Because I don't know. Th when I heard about this story, it was like, really? Because now I'm going to be worried every time I have to tell drunk people they have to go. Yeah. It's going to be, this will be in the back of my head. Yeah. I mean, and it should be, honestly. There's, but it, it's going to be now. And that sucks because it used to be like the worst I would fear is getting punched in the face. And I've, I've proven I can take a good punch or two. <laughs> right. Um, they, I can take a few good hits, but I, I can't take being shot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Last I checked, that uh, that tends to, you know, not go well for the person being shot. <laughs> anyway. It does not. I'm moving on over. Um, so, <clears throat> as is tradition, Knott's Berry Farm transitions from Knott's Scary Farm to Knott's Merry Farm. Uh, basically goes right from one into the other, by all accounts. Like maybe a two week gap there in between, mm -hmm. but their Mary Farm was canceled. They had already they, the the Scary Farm. They had canceled all indoor haunts, right? But they still had trail haunts and scare zones and things like that. So you had a lot you could do theoretically if you went to not Scary Farm. But they had to completely cancel the Mary Farm. Due to worsening COVID. Uh, this article, this is from their Facebook, basically. Um, multiple posts on their Facebook. But basically, there was a new stay-at-home order for Southern California. And they were forced to close uh, starting December 6th. Now, they kept their Christmas craft village, I guess because it's a store. Right. And stores were allowed to stay open. But ultimately, that was canceled, too. And they had to cancel all remaining dates. After, quote-unquote, after a careful consultation with local and county health officials, they announced the closure for the rest of the season all the way through the 3rd of January 
they announced that on December 16th, and guests that had tickets, because all tickets were dated, uh, they were automatically refunded. And that's a good way to do that, yeah. to automatically say, okay, we have to close, here's your money back. Like, yeah. and, and immediately. It. And that's great, because, I mean, the, the, like one of the challenges with issuing refunds a lot of times is you have so many cash sales, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and South Carolina, I mean, South Carolina, South California right now is a hot spot. I mean, I've been talking to Shannon, who's in the chat today, um, and it's it's bad. Yeah. It's really bad. You know, and it's it's weird. Um, and here in Louisiana, the, the governor put an order that closed all indoor alcohol consumption, all bars, basically, yeah. were closed statewide except one parish. Yeah. Our parish. Yeah. Because New Orleanians have overall been taking this much more seriously than the neighboring parishes. Well... And our positivity rate is much lower. Yeah, and that's because whenever this started back end of March, early February, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we were among the highest... Yeah. I mean, we were we were worse per capita than New York was at yeah. its height. And a part of that was because we had Mardi Gras yeah. and did not know the train that was coming for us. Exactly. I mean, no, Mardi, no, they didn't cancel Mardi Gras last year to cancel it this year. We'll get on that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but they can't did not cancel Mardi Gras because there was no reason to. There was no concept it had to be. Yeah, there was no warning or anything for... And so we had Mardi Gras, and then COVID spread like wildfire through the city because people went to Mardi Gras celebrations, and that's indoor and outdoor celebrations. Yeah, and got we had a high, like you said, a higher per capita rate than New York for a hot minute there, and that was when, during New York's peak too. Yeah, and that's when you know we were the worst in the world, pretty much. Yeah, and that's where South California yeah. is right now. Yeah, we. Got that lesson early. The New Orleanians got that lesson early, took it seriously. And yeah, we are. We have some gripes with our mayor. Yeah. A lot of gripes with our mayor, let's be honest. But not about this. Not about this. Not I, I personally don't, at least. But yeah. So yeah, I. it's sad, it's frustrating, but it's completely understandable. Yeah, and and I think they handled it about as well as they could. Yeah, and it's frustrating that people aren't following the guidelines and are actively being horrible in certain parts of the state mm -hmm. um, that's causing these closures. Yeah. You know, their selfishness is causing harm. Well, I've said it before. I feel like I'm doing a group project with the entire country. And much like every group project <laughs> I did in high school, there's supposed to be four of us here working, but I'm doing all the goddamn work. And it's pissing me off. <laughs> yep. Because, <sighs> like, you got four people, right? You're going to have you that does all the work. You're going to have one person who, bless his heart, is going to try. <laughs> And will put in the effort, but just sucks. <laughs> then you're going to have the one person that promises they'll show up and do everything, but never does. And there's one person that never checks in. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much how every group project I worked on went. Yeah. It drove me bananas. Uh, and that's how it feels right now. I have the exact same feeling. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on, though. All right. So a uh, Krampus Christmas event has been put on hold. Mm -hmm. This article is by Clay Schultz at The Journal. Um, in New Ulm, Minnesota, Krampus events put on by the New Ulm Nightmares has been canceled. It was supposed to happen this Saturday, but the governor placed restrictions on indoor entertainment. <clears throat> says that the event is not canceled, but don't know when they'll be able to open. That's not a that's not a postponement. That's a cancellation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> as well, it's like some haunts are saying we're not canceled for twenty twenty. We're just postponed to twenty twenty one. Yeah. No, no, that that's a cancellation, Chief. <laughs> yeah. So instead, they're offering a free drive through event with the Grinch and Krampus. Yeah, they did a whole bunch of an interesting little thing. Yeah. Which I I thought that was really really cool. Yeah. What, what good 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 pivot there. Mm hmm. <clears throat> and that aligns neatly with the story next. Exactly. Um, which is a local one. Right. Which um, Kramp uh, basically our crew of Krampus. Yes. And, okay, the thing to understand about New Orleans is there are crews. K-R-E-W-E -E is how you say yes. it. It's pronounced crew. Um, and they are pivotal to Mardi Gras and social life in this city. Yeah, festivals in general. Festivals in general. And, like, most crews are connected one way or another to Mardi Gras. Right. And they have crews and sub-crews. It gets crazy. <laughs> yeah. And sub-sub-crews. It gets a little bananas. It does. But 
There are crews for other things, too, including a crew of Krampus, which every year puts on a Christmas parade right. featuring lots of Krampuses. Yeah. Um, this is an article by Doug McCash, our old friend at NOLA.com. Mm -hmm. They held, since the, the city has a ban on all parades right now, basically. Yeah. Including canceling Mardi Gras. More on that in a minute. Um, they featured a reverse parade, as mm -hmm. they called it, featuring 80 performers, and they used the parking lot of the New Orleans Recreation Development Commission headquarters. Basically, uh, the way it was described is it started out, it was dancers and bands and things, and then it just got darker and darker and darker and more yeah. sinister as you went through it, and I lo I'm there for that. I wish I... Yeah, and basically people bought tickets to drive through mm -hmm. and see it, and so it was a limited amount of cars still going through so that it didn't, like, muck up traffic too much. Yeah. Um. So I think that that was a great way to do it. That's a great pivot, and that's a great yeah. way to keep the tradition alive and keep it... Um, safe and yeah, and to let the, all of the Krampuses show off all their new gear. Yeah, so indeed, I I thought this was great. I looked at the photos of it; it looked awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so we back to back haunted mansion stories. Yeah, basically. well, we just did back to back Krampus, so yeah. why not? Why not? It makes perfect sense. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we've reported before that the haunted mansion was getting some upgrades. Yeah. And we noted that before the pandemic started, right. that it was going to happen. In fact, it started before the pandemic hit. Yes. And it looks like it just kept going. <laughs> yeah. And this article is by Bailey Abel at Inside the Magic. Um, but Disneyland in California's Haunted Mansion is being refurbished. Like we said, we talked about this. Mm -hmm. um, and it was mainly going to be some of the inner workings and stuff. Um, well, they also took the time to do some of the interiors and exteriors and do some repainting and touching up. They may have had a little more time than they thought they I, I think they decided to add a few things to the project list. They may have done that, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see where scope creep would be a, a good yeah, thing when you for go this from year. Two months downtime to 12 months, <laughs> 10 months, yeah. you got a little more time to do these things. Exactly. So it's not open yet, but neither is the park, so it's no, like... yeah real disadvantage to the Disneyland property on that. Yeah. They're saying it will look quote unquote refreshed yeah. when it is open, which is interesting because it's like, isn't like not looking refreshed part of the ambiance of the haunted mansion? Yeah. It's supposed to look a little bit dingy and dang dinged up and beat up. I, that's what I thought, but yeah, it should reopen with the park whenever it does reopen. Now, if you're looking for those last-minute gift ideas, though, mm -hmm. well, too late, you can't get this one. <laughs> yeah, I know. This pissed I, me I, off. I found out about it today, too. Okay? I know. I, I read it in the notes, and I'm like, damn it. I want one. <laughs> I know. There's new um, Haunted, Mansion vacation Haunted Mansion vacation decoration materializes at Walt Disney World. Uh, this article is by Mia Turner at Fintech Zoom. Basically, they've released a Disney has released a new line of ornaments for many of their attractions, mainly the buildings, which they were kind of including like their fire station and other things. But one of them is the Haunted Mansion, and it includes both a detailed facade of the front, and if you turn it around, it is basically a diorama of the Haunted Mansion inside the ornament. Yes. Very it, detailed. It sounds amazing. And the I mean, this is one of the stories you definitely want to check out the article, because the article has some very good photos of it. Yeah, it does. Uh, they retail for $30. You can still get them at Disney Parks, and I think Disney World in Orlando may still be open. So you might be able to get it there, but they were briefly sold online, but like sold out apparently within seconds. No. Yeah. Which does not shock me. No, me either. I don't know how you get on the Disney list. I don't know that I want to be on the Disney list. No, I don't list, think I want, don't but, want to be. <laughs> but if there was a, a Haunted Mansion specific list, then, yeah. you know, I'd probably get on that. Yeah, that'd, though, be, that'd probably be worth it, yeah. Even though I've never been, mm -hmm. I, I still, like, have a a forlorn love for it because it's like someday I will get to go. Yeah. And, and we will definitely go sometime after COVID and all that. Yeah. I've been through it, but, and I, I highly recommend it to anyone that hasn't mm -hmm. been. It's, it's a lot of fun. No. Yeah. All right. Next up. All right. So Last you, two stories. Run yeah. it down. Yeah. You mentioned that 
Mardi Gras this year has been canceled. Well, yeah, you know, Mardi Gras is still going to, it's like Christmas. It's going to happen. It's just going to be different. Yeah. Well, the parades for Mardi Gras Which have been people canceled. equate with Mardi it's, Gras, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. It's, it's a, a religious holiday, mm-hmm. so it's not canceled, canceled, but the parades have been canceled, so all the float um, workers and builders are having are struggling and this is from mike mcdaniel at wwl tv um so in partnership with a crew of red beans which is another crew they hired mardi gras artists um and carnival artists mm-hmm. to transform houses into floats yep. and this is and it cost <laughs> it's 10K. about it's ten k. It's ten thousand dollars. I'm not spending ten thousand dollars to turn my house into a float. I understand that artists are struggling, but I don't have that kind of money. So, but um, their goal is to get forty such houses done and then put them on a map so that you can drive around and you can see all of them. The first one, of course, has a giant skull with giant flowers on it. It's really pretty. Um, so this is another one. Check out the article. There is, um, a separate project called the crew of house floats. Um, and it's been underway since I think before this started, yeah, actually. I think it, I think it was the original. Um, yeah. And it's, it's more of a do it yourself. Encouraging would, people to get in on the act themselves more than hire someone. Yeah. I was invited to be in it. So whenever we do our Mardi Gras themed front yard display, um, we will be taking pictures and participating in that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you can also donate to the project. If a 10K is a little steep, you can donate to yeah. the project and then be entered into a raffle to have your house turned into a float. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, but no, I, I, li- I like this idea because, once again, it's just a reverse parade. Yeah, it is. It's, it's we, another reverse parade. And you can't go to the street to watch the floats go by. Go drive around and look at people's houses. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I've I'm. i never been in the city. The last time Mardi Gras was quote unquote canceled, I think was before I was born. Yeah. It was sometime in the seventies, I believe. Yeah. Um I it wasn't was... even canceled by Hurricane Katrina. No. Two thousand six Mardi Gras went off. I won't yeah. say without a hitch, but it It went off. No, I think the the last time you're thinking of that it was canceled, it was due to um to wage strikes. No, that wasn't it wasn't canceled that year. They brought in the uh Okay. National Guard. There was something else know. in the seventies that canceled it earlier. Before that, it was seventy seven that that happened, and that's a very famous Mardi Gras because the police they brought in the National Guard. Yeah, and because the police were on strike, um, they brought in the National Guard. At least the story as I remember it, and basically they brought in the National Guard and said only arrest people for crimes against people or property. Yeah. So. If you can think of a crime that isn't against people or property, and I bet you can think of a few, <laughs> they're functionally legal. <laughs> Underage drinking? Eh. All kinds of nudity and sexual deviancy in the streets? Eh. Yeah. Not crimes against people or property, and it was apparently a pretty baller year because of that. But yeah. that's the story I've heard. Like I said, that happened before I was born, so and the, the story is I understand it. Yeah. And our final story, I know Crystal is looking up information on that, but I'll slide into That's the okay. last one. Um, Haunted Overload donates to Pope Memorial Humane Society uh, for its 10th year. And this is just a great feel-good story. The article is by the Foster's Daily Democrat. Uh, Haunted Overload donated just over 48000 so nearly fifty k. I think it's close enough we yeah. can say nearly $50,000, to the Pope Memorial Humane Society, and they have done... This and similar every year for the past 10 years donated a portion of their revenue. Uh, the money previously was used to create a cat playroom yeah. in the Humane Society, which cats don't need a playroom. I have two cats. They they play on anything. They will. A cat playroom <laughs> can be just a bunch of Amazon boxes. <laughs> it can. Well, you know, they ordered the stuff and they put the boxes in the room. <laughs> Or $50,000 worth of stuff on Amazon just yeeted the boxes into a room and let the cats have at it. Yeah. I would tell the cats would be happy with that. They would. I mean, I think it's great that you build a cat playroom, but come on, let's be honest. They're cats. Yeah. Uh, they've donated in total nearly $350,000. Just crazy. And it founded in 1984 in Dover, Maine. The society served Stratford County in southern Maine. 
Haunted Overload, of course, being in Maine, like right there at the border between it and New Hampshire. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it makes perfect sense. And it's just very cool. And uh, by the way, I noticed in the photo of them handing over the big check, everyone at the ceremony is wearing their mask properly. Yes. And that tickles my cockle so much. It does, because there's always so many people in those types of photos who are doing it wrong. One way or another, they're doing it wrong. <sighs> I gotta say, people have been discovering new ways to wear a mask wrong this entire pandemic. They have. And it's very frustrating. It is. Anyways, uh, time to return to the question of the week. I know we had at least one person drop in a suggestion. Yes, we only have the one. Okay, that's fine. It's Roberta McKellen. Yes. Uh, She wants a heated coat. And she got it. And she got it. And let's put it to good use. A heated coat, yeah, there you go. Heat a coat. That sounds awesome. I didn't know that that was a thing, but that sounds like a thing Ellie would want. I think <laughs> Ellie is already on Amazon buying one. <laughs> she heard the words heated coat <laughs> and is currently on Amazon right now picking one up. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm out here in shorts right now. I, I tend to run very cold. I don't like a lot of heat in my life. But Ellie um, the is, temper- the opposite. is the opposite. If the temperature drops below 72, she's a wreck. So, you mm-hmm. know. I love her, but it's opposite day with us on temperature. Yeah. (laughs) Thank God we don't have to have a fight over the thermostat. Yes. On that note, everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Please continue to put your Christmas or holiday season wish list items either as a comment to the Facebook post, facebook.com slash hauntweekly, on DM it to us, or add us on Twitter at hauntweekly on Twitter. Send it to us via hauntweekly.com's contact form. You can also, of course, do it on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash hauntweekly. And, of course, you can listen to this podcast wherever you get your podcast at. We're pretty much everywhere at this point. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all over the shop. I don't know how they let us in, but they did. But until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Haunt Weekly, episode 264, doing the news for November and December. We'll be back next week with a guest. More up on that coming up. See you then.